So our topic for lecture 15 today is continuing on with our discussion of competition, uh, but this time we are going to focus on competition as a selective force that shapes the evolution of populations. First, though, I'd like to quickly review some of the themes that we covered in our last, lect uh, last lecture discussing the ecological uh, impacts of competition. So one of the things uh, that we talked about last time was that interspecific competition as an ecological force uh, has large consequences for many populations. And we know that it reduces the fitness of organisms and that it often reduces the population size of different species as well. And when competition is particularly strong uh, between species, we also saw that it can lead to competitive exclusion where a species will be eliminated from a community at a given site uh, and maybe eliminated from a set of environmental conditions that otherwise it would be able to live perfectly well if it wasn't for that other species that it had to compete with. Now, while we saw that competitive exclusion is sort of the thing that we expect when species compete uh, for the same limiting resource, we also discussed that when we look out in nature, we see an awful lot of coexistence between species that seem to compete. And one of the reasons that coexistence appears to be possible is that in many cases, uh, resource partitioning is happening. And so species are utilizing resources in a slightly different way or a slightly different form. And this tends to reduce how intense competition is between the species. And this potentially helps explain why then we see so many coexisting competing species living in the same places. Now, one thing that I didn't mention last time was that in terms of resource partitioning, if species are partitioning resources, then in general, we would expect that interspecific competition is going to be less intense or weaker than intraspecific competition or competition between individuals of the same species. And I just wanted to note this as it is very relevant to your competition experiments uh, that we set up a couple weeks ago, uh, because this is one of the reasons why this issue of whether interspecific or intraspecific competition is so important. Um, theory and empirical evidence suggest that coexistence between competing species is going to be most likely when this condition is met. Coexistence uh, does seem that it can be possible between competing species if uh, there is resource partitioning uh, between the species, weakening the strength of competition. But one question that this raises is, well, how does resource partitioning arise in the first place? And in ecology, one hypothesis is that differences in resource use between different species may have ar arisen um, due to natural selection acting on populations uh, because in the past, those populations may have been strongly competing. And if that's the case, we expect that they would have suffered the very negative consequences of interspecific competition. And if that competition is bad for them, then if traits uh, arose in the population, 
such that they limited the amount of competition though that individuals experienced, then we would expect natural selection for those traits, which ultimately would lead to reduced competition uh, between those species and account for resource partitioning, as we see appears to be pretty common in nature. Now it turns out that this concept of natural selection acting to reduce the strength of competition between species, uh, this has a name and we refer to this as character displacement. So character displacement is the evolution of divergence or increased difference in some trait between two species that is caused by natural selection for reduced competition between them. So that is a big mouthful. What does that really mean? Well, all this means is that character displacement is the process or the phenomenon by which traits between species evolve to be different. And they evolve to be different because competition is acting as a selective agent uh, and causing higher fitness to traits that cause reduced competition. Now, an important thing to note about character displacement is that because it is the result of natural selection, of course, these traits have to have, these traits that diverge have to have a genetic basis, just as any trait that evolves uh, via natural selection does. Um, and so the traits that might be involved and the sort of topic of character displacement could be any trait that's associated with how an organism obtains resources. So one example that we'll see here in a bit is beak size in birds. The size of a bird's beak is uh, very closely related to the types of food it can eat. A big bill can usually eat bigger things but a big bill is generally not very good at eating really, really little tiny things. Um, a big bill also helps to get into things that are really uh, tightly protected by a heavy, say, seed coat. Uh, so aspects of bill morphology relate directly to an organism's ability to get resources and therefore Evolution of bills is a great example of things that might uh, respond to character displacement. Now, it makes sense that character displacement would be common. Um, if competition has such strong negative impacts, then it makes sense that we would expect many traits to have evolved in response to competition and show this divergent pattern. But it turns out that it's often very difficult to show that character displacement has happened. And this is largely because uh, character displacement occurred because of something that happened in the past. And it's hard to know what happened in the past. We only see the result of what happened in the past. And we'll come back to this point um, later. But one source of evidence uh, that can support the existence of character displacement and thus the role of competition in shaping the evolution of species traits uh, comes from looking at populations of two species where they exist separately from each other. So this is known as allopatry so this is where they live in separate locations and we can compare that to regions of sympatry which is where they occur together if character displacement has occurred where do we expect 
those traits to be most different from each other between the species? Do we expect to see the greatest difference when those species live in separate places? Or do we expect to see the, mo the biggest difference in traits when they live together? So take a moment and think about that. You can pause the video uh, and, and try to reason this out for yourself. So if character displacement has occurred, what we expect is that when we find the species existing separately in environments without the other, then we expect the traits to be more similar. And so you can think of this axis here as the measurement of a character trait. This is just a vague uh, term, not anything specific. But if you could have a trait that you can measure some way, we expect that measurement to be similar. So the traits are more are very similar when we find them living when we find them living in different places. But in places where they are occurring together, then if character displacement has occurred, that's when we expect those traits to be divergent, because the idea is that. Here in this place where they live together, that's where the selective pressure of competition has been to lead to this divergence in traits. But in these other environments where we only find one species, they haven't been uh, exposed to that selective pressure. And so we expect those traits to not have diverged because that selective pressure hasn't been there. Now, a classic example of the distinction between traits in allopetry versus sympetry um, comes from looking at two species of ground finches in the Galapagos Islands. And here we are looking at two species um, of Geospiza, Geospiza fort, uh, fortis, and Geospiza uh, ful, fuliginosa. They're very hard to tell apart. It turns out that among the islands of in the Galapagos, you can find places where you only have one species. So here we have fuliginosa, and on this island, we only have fortis. Uh, so those birds are living alone on those islands, I mean alone relative to the other species. But then on one island, you can find both species living. And what we see is that if you look at the populations on these islands, and here we're looking at essentially a sort of histogram of the distribution of beak depth. So that is just how deep those beaks are. And what you see is that if you kind of look at the average or the mode of these distributions, when the species exist separately on different islands, they're more similar in beak depth. However, when you go to the island where they both occur, you find now that there, there's quite a large difference in the mode or mean of beak depth between these species. And so this pattern is consistent with what we expect uh, to occur and arise because of character displacement. The idea is that when they're by themselves, they look pretty similar. And so they probably utilize similar types of food because they have those same types of, of beaks with, that are similar in depth. But on islands where they live together, the idea is that there in the past must have been strong selection uh, to reduce competition between these species. And that led to this more distinctive difference in beak depth that would ultimately lead to differences in the foods that they eat on this island as well. Now, is this sort of pattern definitive evidence that character displacement is responsible for a pattern like this? 
Well, no, unfortunately it's not because the environment here is different potentially than the environment here. And it's not certain that the only thing that differs between this environment here and this environment here and here is that there's competition with that other species. Uh, there could be other environmental differences as well that cause this difference and shift in the distribution of beak depths for both of these species. And if it's if this difference here is not caused by competition, then it's not character displacement. So this indicates one of the big problems with figuring out how common character displacement is in nature. In other words, how common is it for traits to evolve to be different because of selection for reduced competition. So because of competition acting as a selective force. And this is particularly uh, hard to do when we don't have species that we find both living in allopatry and sympatry currently. Often we only see species using slightly different resources in the same environment but we only really have instances where their ranges overlap. We always find them in the same environment. So in those cases, how can we know that the differences in their resource use evolved because of competition in the past? And the, this problem can sort of be uh, visualized in terms of measurement of trait characters when we think about instead of how traits may differ in allopatry and sympatry currently, we can think of their current range, if that's all in sympatry, how does that relate to the past environments those organisms actually lived in when their traits evolved in the first place? And we may see that currently there's quite a big difference in those traits associated with resource capture. Um, but if we were to zoom back into the past, we might see that those trait differences arose way and long before those species ever interacted. And it may just be the different environmental conditions in those different previous environments led to selection for those traits that then allowed them to both coexist later on because they were different enough that uh, competitive exclusion wasn't going to happen. And so this is sort of the worry when we think about character displacement is that the pattern that looks like it's consistent with competition forcing those species to evolve to be different might not really be what has happened. It could just be they evolved to be different separately um, in the past without any uh, exposure to competition.